We did an episode called The Customer is Always Wrong, and ever since then, you've been asking me for more of it, asking me to make a series, and I have relented. So today I give you The Customer is Always Wronger, part two, two customer, two wrong. Let's go today on HTD. Wrong. This. <laughs> So a little while back, we took a look, a stroll, if you will, down the Instagram of Mover and Shaker, where they tend to post the receipts of customer requests that, well, they just ain't right. And we printed a few of those receipts out and we threw them in a jar and uh, picked them at random and there's still more of them. So we're gonna get right into making these drinks. If you missed part one, I'll put a link in the pinned comment below. You might wanna see it, it might be instructive. So let's just get right on with it. See what we gotta do here. This is right off the top good lord classic cocktail malort and dill aquavit sour Fuck. nothing like ripping off the band-aid aren't we out of malort we are we are but we have besk we used up all the malort making that batch of stuff from uh, critical role this is essentially this is the same class of spirit that malort is you notice it's the same color this is from chicago illinois from leatherby it's just like another branding of Malort. Sorry, we don't have the real thing, but I think that you'll find that this is sufficient. Wah! Like drinking fresh cut grass cut mixed with vomit. Holy shit, that's bad. My God, Besk is the worst. We got, um, okay, yeah, we got Alberg, Alberg Tafel Akavit. I, I don't think this is dill though, but we can, maybe we can do that with some dill. We're trying to adhere to what the customer asked for, which is Malort and Dill Akavit. Ay, 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 ay. All right, um, well, let's start. I gotta, I'm gonna take my shaker. I'm gonna start with one ounce of lemon juice. All right, that's one ounce of lemon juice in my shaker. Let's get some simple in here. Highly crystallized in its current state. I'm gonna go half an ounce on our sweet for this one. Mostly, partially because uh, the Alberg was actually pretty sweet. And then I got these two guys, and I haven't figured this out yet. What do you do here that's the most good thing? Least bad thing? Well, the Akavit is probably front and center on this. I think the Malort, or is it just straight split base, ounce of each? You know what? Let's just do it what's written. I think it's just a straight split base, probably. I think if we try to pick and choose winners in this particular case. We're undermining the spirit of this order, which is clearly they were fucking with somebody. Bro, let me order your first drink. That's what this was. Let me order your first drink. I know what I'm gonna do to this guy. You know, like they were fucking with somebody. Now they're fucking with me. Oh God, that's so much of this. Hey, I'm terrified though. What if this comes out good? What if I'm like, I like this. There's always that possibility. That's why we do this. Yeah, that's why we do this. To find the diamond. <laughs> that's the why. <laughs> so I don't have dill akavit. I'm gonna. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do something a little silly. I got dried dill. That's what I got. I don't have any fresh dill. Fresh dill will be better. Um, we're gonna throw some dried dill in there. Now, I'm also gonna strain this back out. So I'm gonna try to like just shake it aggressively and get it to infuse that away. Uh, I do need one egg white. I think that that is the appropriate way to do this. Uh, it smells like pumpernickel bread, mostly. I haven't had pumpernickel since I was a kid. All right, dry shake this. One big cube. One cracked. And now we shake. I'm going to double strain that into this sour glass. I don't know why I expected it to be green. It is lightly green. I usually like a couple drops of Angostura on any sour. I mean, let's give the sucker a fighting chance and uh, probably do a little extra dill on top as well. I'll, I'll try to keep this like one side of the glass to give you like a place where you can drink without having to like put your lips straight into the dill. I don't know. I got some weird stuff going on here. This is the dill and Akavit sour, uh, Akavit dill malort sour. Wow, that is so much better than you would ever expect. Never gonna order that again. Nobody wants it, wants it. The Malort leaves it with like a dry, and by Malort, I do mean Besk, the nearest best thing we can get. It does leave it with a really drying 
bitterness to it that um, I don't think you like. I think it just would be better just like replace that with anything else or just take it out entirely and do more Akavi. I really thought that was gonna make me wretch. I don't hate that. I don't wanna drink it. I'd never wanna order it again, but it's not the pure nightmare fuel that I expected it to be. In fact, and it, it's kind of attractive looking too, to be honest. So that is a real shocker. The first thing that you get is a creamy sour caraway. That's the main flavor in that really. This caraway pumpernickel bread thing, but like if that were some kind of a sweet breakfast pastry, I, I have to say it's remarkable how much better that is than I was expecting. I'm not getting a ton of dill in there. I don't think I would mind it if I were. I think that if I had a real like properly dill infused Akavit, more dill would be fine. I happen to like dill. I imagine that's a problem for some people. I don't know too many people who just hate dill though. <laughs> Are there dill haters out there? Not in the way there's cilantro haters, yeah. I don't think. My wife doesn't love dill, but she also likes no spices, so, or herbs. I think that you would like it better without the Malort, but maybe cutting how much Akavit is there, like if it was all Akavit, it might be, wow, it might be way too much. It might be too much of that. So maybe cutting the Akavit is actually a really a wise move, but like maybe cut it with something that's less bitter. What would you do? I mean, you could use, try a vodka as neutral. I might try certain whiskeys. And doing a rye, then it's like thematic, right? Like then it's like a, a, you call it a bread sour. You've got a rye and pumpernickel kind of sour thing going on. That's actually kind of fun. <laughs> I kind of, I don't hate that. I'm not gonna make it right now. I I hope I'm not disappointing you. I, I really expected this would be like absolutely murder. And I'm sure you're here to see me hurt myself. Do you want to try this? I do. Yeah. Is it savory? I'm gonna find out. <laughs> Should be like, no, Greg, this is torture. You're broken. No, you're right. I really. I was gonna say, I, I, I almost made that prediction. I was like, I think this is something Meredith would actually like, knowing what you like to drink. <laughs> wow, man, I this customer was right. Like nobody saw that. That's the joke. That's why this was a good Twitter post. Everybody saw that and said, Oh my God, that sounds like hell. Yeah, just goes to show you. You never know. That's so weird. Well, AQ7MRBW1DYD8C, the customer, it turns out, is not always wrong. Uh, more the customer's always wrong, though, right after this. Hey, sorry to interrupt the episode here, but Square Enix asked me to create a cocktail to celebrate the fourth anniversary of Dissidia, Final Fantasy, Opera, Omnia, which is admittedly a mouthful, but what do I know about naming games anyway? Thank you, Square Enix, for sponsoring this episode. You know, I grew up with the Final Fantasy games, particularly the pre-FF7 stuff, so I knew right away that the drink I wanted to make was going to be some kind of a cocktail riff on a Phoenix Down. That is, of course, the restoration potion that brings knocked out characters back into the fray. But it turns out that Phoenix Downs don't exactly exist in Opera Omnia, but characters like FF6's Locke and FF9's Ico feature the Phoenix in their abilities and both characters happen to be featured in DFFOO's fourth anniversary campaign that's currently ongoing. So that means I'm allowed to make a Phoenix down, according to Square Enix. Thank you, Square Enix, thank you. So I'm going to grab my shaker and I'm gonna start with an ounce of lemon juice. One ounce of lemon juice. I need a half an ounce of cinnamon simple syrup. This is nothing more than simple syrup with cinnamon added. One ounce of London dry gin. One ounce of Pontra. I think this drink is good with an egg white. A dry shake. Strain that into a coop. I'm going to garnish it with a feather. Preferably the more ridiculous the better, I think. And that is my Phoenix Down. It's kind of a hot cinnamon riff on a Corpse Survivor number two, which made sense to me given what Phoenix Down is and does in the game. That's good, it's really tasty. To celebrate the fourth anniversary of Dissidia, Final Fantasy Opera Omnia, still a mouthful, the game has over 150 Final Fantasy villains and heroes that are playable for free. And even though there's a gotcha system in place for weapons and also there's in-app purchases that are a component here, I think Square Enix has in fact taken pains to keep the game free to play friendly. I gave it a shot and I had fun with it. The fourth anniversary offers tons of bonuses for new players and current players to help with uh, you level up your, your, your characters, your gear, your summons, and several free first multi-draws. Let me tell you, that sentence came straight from the client because I don't know what that means, but it sounds groovy. So whether you're a veteran player or, or a newbie, uh, if you're looking for a Final Fantasy fix, check it out on the Apple App Store and Google Play. Back to the show. Ooh.
I am restored. All right, well, we're back. Let's do another, another something. What do I got in my hand here? I've got, oh, seat one would like uh, an old fashioned substitute gin. All right, let's do a gin old fashioned. I mean, really you can do an old fashioned out of anything. Is this gonna be hellacious? I don't know. One big ice cube, boom. I'm gonna throw two ounces of Tanqueray in there. Sure, London Dry is fine for here. Let's throw in a couple dashes of Angostura. I think Angostura is the way to go here. I love actually the way Angostura and gin pair. Like two bar spoons of simple syrup. All right, I'm stirring. Uh, let's stir this drink up. So my oranges are kind of not great today. They're a little waxy. I've been sitting around too long. So we're gonna do this one with a lemon. Um, you're at my restaurant, I'm just gonna explain to you that lemons are a perfectly acceptable use are perfectly acceptable in this drink. When you make a gin old fashioned, that's what you use. And I do think that this will be great. All right, here we go. One uh, old fashioned sub gin. Cheers. This will not be bad. Love it actually. It's really good. A little bit too sweet actually. Two bar spoons was probably, probably should have just got one bar spoon. It's like uh, Christmas spices and fresh crisp gin, juniper and lemon. This is actually supremely delicious. Nothing that weird here at all. How did this one wind up in the skull? Well, this customer is again correct. We gotta find some wrong customers here. Oh, for two, man, where's the pain? They want the pain, Meredith. Anyway, so I made this uh, gin old fashioned and the reality is, is that you can make an old fashioned, you can make a cocktail in the old fashioned way using just about anything. And this is how you do it, do it with gin. The Angostura shines brighter off the gin than it does off of a whiskey. With a whiskey, whiskey has some, they, they occupy similar spaces um, and when you're tasting it, it's like, hmm, who's bringing what to the table? It's hard to tease it apart. Here, it's very clear. You take a sip of this and you get this sweet Christmas spice punch from the, the interplay of the bitters and your simple that gives way to, um, you know, piney, but I'm not trying to say, I don't, I, people often say they don't like gin because it tastes like piney, pine needles or something like, I don't, that's nonsense. It tastes deliciously piney um, or junipery really rounds out, I mean, and with like a nice lemony citrus zing running right through. This is delicious. This is a fantastic way to make an old fashioned. Approved. This customer is correct. What do we got next, Meredith? Let's find out. Up next on the customer's always wrong. Uh, right after this, I'm gonna make a Maker's Mark Manhattan with a splash of Sprite. Lovely. Okay, Maker's Mark Manhattan with a splash of Sprite. That's Pretty strange. I'm gonna start with my vermouth. I'm gonna use Delon. A lot of people are gonna reach for um, the Antica here. Antica is a delicious thing. It is wonderful. It has a lot of vanilla notes in it. It's not really the vermouth that you would traditionally make this drink with. Let's put it that way. But it does make for a great Manhattan. I think this drink is just gonna be sad. I think this is gonna be a drink that makes me sad. Although I'm not big on Manhattans, I gotta say. They're not my drink, I'm not into them. I'm gonna do two ounces of our Maker's 46. Maker's 46 actually does have uh, some vanilla notes to it, if I recall. Wait a minute. Perhaps one dash of Angostura bitters here. Sort of the two one, oh no, two dashes, the two one two formula, right? And now we're gonna crack it, uh, crack some ice in there and stir that up. Crack some ice. Let's stir. Strain this into my glass. And now, pièce de la résistance, a Sprite. Delicious. You must now destroy the beverage. What do you think a splash is, Meredith? Yeah, you're not topping it. You're spl right. Yeah, splash. Sprite. Put it in your alcohol. This is a Sprite Manhattan. A Manhattan with Sprite in it. Let's see how it is. Jesus. It's an angry drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that is a lot worse than you would think. It. You, 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 you're surprised. It's surprising. How far wrong a little Sprite can take a Manhattan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. It, it tastes like you turned, whew. I can't explain that, That that's gross. It tastes like you took the Manhattan. And now you got your, 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 your whiskey, your makers there, and you, you just turn down the volume on it. And then you fade into, um, on whatever the Sprite is bringing. What the Sprite is bringing is just not great. It makes, ah, it tastes, like plasticky static. I don't know, man. It's really weird because like the Sprite on its own doesn't taste like that. But when you put the Sprite into here, somehow it strips all the sweetness out of the Sprite. And what's left is like this very chemical tasting flavor. 
it just, it tastes, it tastes like a Manhattan made by a computer? No, a tire balancing machine or like some kind of like piece of heavy equipment. That's what it tastes like. That's, I mean, I'm not fully cursed, but this customer is wrong. This drink is terrible. I can't imagine thinking Manhattan. Oh, I know what that needs. Sprite. Like what is the pr process there? Like, I, how does that happen? How does that happen? How does that become your drink? Is it your drink? Maybe you're thinking like, oh, I want to have a drink, but I want to have it like, I want to lengthen it. I want to have a little lower proof. I don't want it to be, you know, I, I, maybe you're thinking someone told this person that like, maybe this was a person who was concerned that they would embarrass themselves because they don't like a drink or they don't like alcohol. And they're like, put some Sprite in it. I like that. But like you're shooting yourself. This is, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying to understand. I'm just trying to understand how the Sprite gets in your Manhattan. Obviously you order it that way. That's how it gets in there. But in your mind, how does that happen? How does that happen in your mind? How does that, the, I can't handle it. It's just awful. Ugh. 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 No good. No bueno. It's a bad drink. Bad drink. Need water. A vodka martini with a splash of Sprite and an orange twist. What? Is it for the same person? Who's doing this? What is with the Sprite? I don't have enough of the receipt here to tell. No, this is seat four. This is table 74. God damn. What the fuck? What the fuck? Why? Why would you do that? That actually might be good. Now that I'm thinking about it, that might not be bad because we're doing a vodka martini here. I know how to make a vodka martini. All right, vodka martini, splash Sprite coming up right after this. All right, so I now must make a, uh, a vodka martini. So a vodka martini is different than the kind of martinis I usually make. I, I personally think that if you're making a vodka martini, it probably should be shaken. Why is that? Well, it's because of the, 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 the person who wants the vodka martini, they want it ultra crazy cold, typically. That's like the primary feature that the vodka martini drinker wants. In fact, a lot of times they want a sheen of shattered ice across the top of the drink. So my gut here tells me to shake this one. It's not a shaken drink typically. I usually make my martinis with um, a really healthy portion of vermouth. But again, this vodka martini that's gonna be shaken, I think we wanna do like the bar spoon move. Maybe, maybe two bar spoons. Wanna go with the teeny tiny vermouth on this one. In fact, we could have done this in a uh, perfect martini style, which is a whole thing. That's where you, uh, how do you do that? You, you throw ice in your shaker, you pour vermouth on your ice, you shake your shaker, you pour your vermouth off, and whatever's left on the ice is how much vermouth goes into the martini. Yeah, that's like a mid-century, like 60s thing. Um, for an example on how to do that, check out uh, Colossus the Forbin Project, which was sort of uh, primary inspiration for probably Terminator. Uh, okay, we're gonna um, crack some ice, put some ice in here. And uh, I should say too, why am I not putting my Sprite in my shaker? I mean, I would think that that would be obvious. If you put Sprite in the shaker, it will erupt in foam. Um, that's definitely something we do as a top up after the drink is poured. Why are you not putting bitters in your shaker? That's a great question. I'm not putting bitters in my shaker because I forgot. So let's put those in there now. Two dashes of orange bitters. Let's pour this martini. And now a little Sprite in here. And a twist of orange, which as I said, I'm gonna have a hard time with, but we're gonna do our best. My oranges suck today. Yeah, it is an attractive, it looks nice, right? I think the clear, frosty, cloudy drink with the orange and it looks great. Here's a martini orange twist with Sprite. Again, whoa! Who was putting Sprite in their drinks? That tastes terrible. It just tastes like a weird buttery. It tastes, I don't know, that's very unexpected. It's not nearly as bad as the Sprite Manhattan, but it is weird. What does that taste like? That tastes like strange orangey butter. The more I'm spending time with it, I don't hate it. In fact, it's actually pretty tasty. It's just not what at all what I was expecting sipping into a martini of any kind, vodka or otherwise. I mean, if you like it, that's what I'm gonna go with on this one. If you know what you're ordering, if this is what you wanted, there it is. It, that's it, orange butter. That's all I get on the flavor profile there. It's strange how like reductive that is. But I guess that's the vodka. You know, vodka carries no real flavor. And, and then the twist of orange and the Sprite with that lemon lime thing. But like, huh, that's a strange one but not terrible, terrible. Just, I don't want that terrible. 
Let me reach into the skull, the head of terrible ideas. What do we got next? It is up next on how to drink. I'm making Kahlua Coke with olives. I kind of want to eat one of these olives. I love them. Stupid olives. I love them. What the fuck? Really made me look like a, a wimp there. Jesus. Oh yeah. This is gonna be terrible. There are no ways it's gonna go well. So I'm gonna, I'm not really sure how to proceed here. Sorry, I've never had to make a Kahlua Coke with two olives or a Kahlua Coke for that matter. I think what I wanna do is shake my Kahlua on ice. I think that's what I wanna do just to get it chilled and diluted. Uh, I would shake it with the Coke, but I cannot because the Coke will, will foam, it'll be bad news. So let's do that. Let's add, yeah, sure. Let's just do two ounces of uh, Kahlua here. Get some ice. Get your glass. Strain my Kahlua into my glass. We're gonna top that sucker up with our Coca-Cola. Again, here we go. Coca-Cola, top it up. Uh, we'll get a couple of olives here. Just two, apparently, just two. Stick them on a sword. These are the little ones, there's the big ones, you know. And there we have it, a Kahlua Coke with two olives. Bottoms up. Kahlua and Coke tastes weird. Oh man, that tastes weird. Ah. All right, you know what that tastes like? You ever been to like a crummy little sleaze bag motel? Like you're on a road trip somewhere and you gotta stay someplace for the night. Probably there's like some spot there that's like within spitting distance of the pool, if there is one. And they've also got a couple of vending machines and an ice maker, like that little like alcove. This tastes like that alcove. That's what this tastes like. It tastes like stale cigarettes and chocolate and candy. And it's like weirdly not the worst thing I've ever had but it is also very evocative of exactly that alcove where like the tile or gum floor is just like got gum stuck to it. And like there's a flickering, flickering fluorescent lamp and like a machine that just ate your dollar. That's what this tastes like. It's a cockroach. There might be a cockroach or a palmetto machine. bug around. Yeah, for sure. I, yeah, it's like, it's very sweet. It's, it's cloyingly sweet. I don't particularly want it, but that flavor profile combo of a coffee liqueur with a Coca-Cola not crazy. I think it made like a coffee infused Coca-Cola. So it, it's not a crazy notion. Um, here we go. Now I'm going to take this sip with a bite of olive to see if they're onto something with that combo. Mm -hmm. They're not. It just tastes like two different things. Honestly, this drink just sort of tastes like sadness. Yeah. It just tastes a little bit like depraved misery, you know, hollowness, the, ho the ho hollow, hollow sort of emptiness that we, um, we carry in ourselves uh, that we dare not confront. And here it is confronting you from this inky black glass with the sword skewered olive. It just stares right back in your face and, 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 and bids you drink, drink deeply of your emptiness. The recap is that these customers weren't nearly as wrong as they were last time. I suppose the Akavit Malort sour, shockingly drinkable. I, shudder to call it good, but I think it might actually be good. I think it might actually be a good drink. And then something that I just figured would be disappointing was actually just kind of soul crushing. It was just a miserable hellhole of a drink. Coca-Cola and Kahlua, again, that was something. I had really no expectations when I started to make this one. I, I just figured it would be a martini uh, with Sprite, but instead it's like this butter orange juice. I don't know. And my ginny, gin, gin, ginny, gin, gin, old fashioned. Well, gin old fashioned's a fine thing. That's, you know, that's just a fact. It's not that weird, actually. I mean, it isn't like a common order or anything like that, I'm sure, but like, there's no reason why you can't make a gin old fashioned and it's a fine thing to have. Well, there it is, five customers of various degrees of incorrectitude. So if you guys liked this and you liked the last one and you want more of this kind of nonsense, although I don't think that this, I, I'm, I'm not stupid, this didn't get there. This didn't get to the kind of insanity that that previous episode did, I know. It just didn't, but I'm not gonna fake it for you. It's honest, this was a real thing. Um, but if you want to see more of this, you got to show me what you got. Send me your receipts, DM them to me on the Twitter or, uh, send them to info at this is how to drink.com or something so that, uh, you know, hit us up on the, on the social medias that are now appearing before your very eyes so that we can do part three of this. I think that we can do better. I think that there's some, some more strengths out there. Just got to get them for me. That is today's how to drink. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope that you did enjoy the show, uh, but you could watch some more of the show. Check those out. Check out all these episodes of the show that I've been making for six years here for you this whole time. Just me and you alone together.
and also now married. All right, see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.